Hey everybody. Today we have an end focus to look at. This was sent in by a YouTube viewer. This is an IN119 HDX. Not super old model. Um, not quite sure who made this, if it's Cortronic or what. I guess we'll find out once we get inside. Trying to see if any of that stuff tells us anything here. It's hard to tell with in focus. They say they made it, but and maybe they did. I don't know. Kind of looks like an Optima, though. You know, the, the layout and everything. But I'm pretty sure this was sent in because there's some damage on the main board from uh, a color wheel wire that um, possibly tore off the connector. I'm going to look at that. If that's the case, we'll replace that and get it up and running for them. So, first thing, let's... Uh, open this up and just make sure everything's hunky-dory. Just want to see if any other symptoms jump out. This looks familiar. It's a good thing they cleaned it because with the coloring I can see that this particular lamp assembly ran really hot. This is a lot lighter than it should be. You can see where the barcode sticker burned off and that metal has turned a nice golden color. And I can even see evidence of where dust used to be and there's still some inside the uh, lamp housing here, but not a big deal. The uh, wire, wire I believe was originally gray. Let's see, yeah, because down in there you would have seen it being a different color. But all in all, looks like they got it pretty clean. Um, I do see that fan wire. I don't know if you guys can see that. that fan wire down there. I don't know if that's supposed to be draping, <clears throat> pardon me, draping across like that or what, but we'll figure it all out. This is good. Let's start um, taking this bottom off. Oh, I remember. This reminds me of that BenQ, that H HT 3550. So I wonder if Kizdi, Kizda makes this for in focus. If any real projector engineers see these videos and can tell me that stuff, I'd appreciate it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, the screws are all out. Don't nope, just take this right off. Beautiful. Okay, we have the lamp door switch. Okay, so he just reassembled the best he could and packed it up. And yeah, I can see the damage there. I'm pretty sure this fan. In fact, we'll just do this now just for my own. Uh, maybe not. Maybe that was right. So there's the foam. It's just weird to see it stretched like that. I would have expected it to, you know, kind of be like that or something and have the, the wire out of the way, but... All right, well... I am not an engineer, so I'm going to leave that as the engineers designed it. I know people like to modify things and make them better, and yeah, sometimes that works. But I'm not going to do that here. So let me show you guys the uh, damage up close. There it is, right here. There's supposed to be uh, the connector for the uh, color wheel wire to plug into, and um, it got torn off. That's all right. It, sometimes they're not soldered on there the best. It'll happen. Um, we definitely have three ripped up traces, so I'm gonna have to get a little creative with some wiring bits. They all go back to these transistors though right here all those traces they're fired off these transistors right there which are then controlled by chip underneath I think it's the PMD 1000 we see on other stuff so I should be able to clean this up right as it is this is the ballast control Let's see blower fan over here what's this uh, oh, temp sensor the lamp area, low voltage power, and then the blower fan. And then on this side, 
we just have a speaker where that speaker normally goes right here maybe and there we'll figure it out then on the other side let's see the speaker goes somewhere I think it goes here that's what it looks like the wire probably goes behind there And that's the uh, super high fidelity speaker. Boom, boom. Okay, so let me go find a donor board that we can grab a connector out of to fix this. I think this should be a good replacement. I am pretty sure whoever makes this board also made this board. You can see there's a lot of visual similarities with the way they do the screw holes and the, the copper pores. And even the stickers look similar. Just trying to see if there's any kind of manufacturer info. Maybe it's under that sticker because we got something here. It says solder joints PCA. See, this looks a lot like a Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi uses this kind of screws and everything. So that could be them. Um, but the color wheel connector, right there, you can see it goes to a bunch of transistors. And it looks like it has the same footprint. So we're going to go with this connector. Um, and if not, I do have another board we can try. So let's go desolder this one. All right, so we've got it set up there. Let me get some flux because we're going to heat it from underneath. I am not going to even try and heat it from the top because I guarantee you I'll melt that plastic. In fact, when we put the new, when we put this on the other board, we're going to use um, my uh, NF mini soldering pen instead of hot air. I really need to get some of those bent tips for this thing too. So let's see. I will. Let's see. Let's stand it up maybe. Do it that way. Yeah, let's see. It's not. Yeah, let's try that way. All right. I'm going to run the heat up pretty high. I'm going to run it about 400. The trick I've found is heat it high and quickly to try to get the board hot before the plastic gets hot. And since the plastic's not actually sitting on the board, that might work. Let's see, the flux melted. Probably should have flipped it over so the flux ran down onto the piece instead of off of it. Oh, well, maybe. It's starting. Well, not quite. Let me go a little hotter. And if this one doesn't work, I do have a few others that we can try. Just don't want to bend the or warp the plastic. You can see I'm wobbling it, so something's starting to move. It's like those side tabs aren't melting, they're not letting go. Totally blocked the shot there. Uh, plastic starting to soften up. 
think I'm about to ruin this one. If this doesn't work, I'm going to show you another method. I think I'm about to melt this. Oh, I think it's starting to go. Okay, so I did get it up. I got it off the board, um, but I ended up tearing the other, the board traces off. Oh, where are you at? But I'm actually okay with that because I just want the connector. I don't care about the traces on this board. So we'll just wobble it back and forth until it lets go and then let me get my rubbing alcohol bath here just a little connector with some rubbing alcohol in it and we'll throw it in there and cool it off and clean it up a little oh, no, you guys can't see it So it actually came off okay. I didn't wreck it. I didn't warp it. It's fine. Fully functional. But it's... Uh, let's turn off. There we are. Turn off autofocus. Or turn on autofocus. Now you can see it. So i got to clean these pads off the back. We'll do that with the NF Mini. So we can head back over and start putting this together. Alright, so we're going to clean this up a little. This just really tells me that I really need to invest in one of those uh, NF Mini Pen Grinders that Alex over in Northridge Fix uses. I'll uh, put a link to his channel in there. I'm sure, though, if you've seen my channel, you're aware of his channel because he's got a ton of subscribers. and I'm doing all right. Very happy. Uh, he's also a very good technician, so I uh, definitely want to support his channel for what it's worth coming from me. But first, let's get these little extra pieces off. <laughs> so when I have gloves on, that's not going to work. How can we get around that? Can I... And maybe... Let's see something. Is it the case to the button? Yep. Alright, so it's measuring 
it's measuring between the case and the button to tell it when to turn on. So let's uh, see, how can I do that? Maybe this stuff, or you know what, I guess I can just take my glove off. Or, eh, let's just take my glove off. For this, I don't really need it. I just like to protect my hands from the flux and stuff. But I'll just, this hand will hold the iron, and the other hand will do the, uh, will hold the, the piece. So let's see, get it in frame. Nope, let's zoom in. Yeah, all right. Turn the temperature down a little. I have it set at 400, because I was using this for something a little bigger than it was made for, but it worked. This one off, and I gotta let me get my um, my little brass sponge. It's over on the other side. And then these guys. Alright, that's clean. Okay, so I think what we'll do is, yeah, I'm going to clean those broken pieces off on the side, clean up those pads, and then we'll ring out which transistor goes to which. We'll mount that down there, and then I can solder the one pad, and then the other three pads will run little jumper wires, and I think that'll work well. So let's clean this up. Let's get the uh, let's get this old support off. Come on, melt. Wonder if I need my bigger tip. This tip's kind of. Not really letting me heat this up enough to get that pad off. I think I might want to try the chisel tip here. Yeah, let me get the chisel okay, tip. Okay, so I put the uh, chisel tip on. Clean that off real good. Yeah, that looks good. So let's see. I might have to run the heat up a little bit. I also wonder if maybe I need to wet the solder. That is not budging. Let me see if uh, wetting it with a little solder helps. I did put flux on. So we'll put a little more flux and see what happens. Okay. Now I'm going to bring it back up to 400 again. go. And I'll get some wick in there and we'll clean that off. And then this one, I have to do the same thing.
Where are we at? There we are. There's the piece. That's off. Okay, so I cleaned up those pads. That's good. Let's, um, let me get that extra, let's get that extra solder off. Dump out my pump here. I just want to get the solder off these extra, the extra solder off these two pads. good okay so I have a little drawing of the connector that's how it'll be oriented on the board so we're going to let's see so it's going to be like that so that leaves us with let's see one transistor two and four. So we got all four transistors there. You can see them here. So now I'm going to check to see which wire goes to what transistor. So we're going to check this one first. I'm pretty sure that is the um, you can see I'll put up the uh, the picture I took of the of the board up close. So the first one goes to that first via. Then there's a second via and a third via, and then the pad that's still good. So that first via I should be able to. Okay, good. I can get on that. And let's see. Okay, so that one goes here. So we have one, two, three, four. So that one's one. I don't know if I can get that via of the second one. It's really bad. Ah, no, I got it. All right. Two goes to here that pin. So I'm going to guess that three... Yep. Three goes to that pin, and then the pad that's good... Yep. Four goes to that pin. So that's what we have to hook up. Jumper wire from there to there, jumper wire from there to there, jumper wire from there to there, and then that one should be fine. And then the two pads that I cleaned up will hold the connector. And here's a little tech tip. If you need a source for thin hookup wire, and you can see this stuff's pretty dang thin. This is actually the motor 
stator from a brushless fan, uh, you have some thin wire there to use. Okay. So that and that. Now, if I was fancy like Alex, I'd have little pads I put there and then solder mask them down. But I don't have those pads. I am going to buy some. I think his little pad kits are super cool. In fact, I think most of the stuff he sells is pretty cool. The, uh, the needle probes, yeah, they weren't that great. I mean, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But I kind of thought their needle probes would be a little bit, um, I don't want to say higher quality. But they don't seem any different than the ones I can buy on eBay or Amazon. And not a, it's not a problem or a bad thing. It's just... For whatever reason, I expected them to be a little fancier, but they're fine. You know, the, the needle probes they sell are great. I don't have any problems with the products they sell, I guess is where I'm going. I don't want to sound like I do, or, you know, that I have a problem. So, let's get that straight on there, almost. And then, I think I might have to, man, that's sitting up high. I gotta get those pads cleaned up better. Okay, so I got those cleaned up. And I apologize for my phone going nuts. Alright, let's get that on there. Board's a little warm from the soldering, but I think I think we're good. So the first thing I want to do is see if I can get one of those side tabs to grab. So let's... So there's no little key. Sometimes they have like a little button in the bottom that allows it to uh, not shift around. Okay, so I got those sides to grab. Now let's get that one. Get that pin look good. Yeah. I like that. Alrighty. So now this is where it's going to get a little messy, and I may want to consider switching tips again. We'll see gonna try and just get a little bit of solder just to get each connection ready this is tricky because I don't want to bridge the connections I'd have to get my microscope, my Andon Star microscope. Oh, that's what I didn't want to happen. It worked out because there is solder on there now. Then let's see. Are we okay? Making sure I don't have you guys zoomed in where you can't see. So we get a little bit of flux here. Really don't need to do that last one, but we will anyway. And then what I'm doing here, the reason I am doing flux and solder is the solder they use, I'm pretty sure, is silver solder. Or at least some form of rose compliant solder. And doesn't like to um, 
melt again and be re-soldered as well. So I put a little bit of uh, 6040 in there. Some good old Kester splattering 6040. This stuff's good though. I like that stuff. All right. So now hopefully this view does not get corrupted for the focus. So I tinned the ends of four pieces of wire. There we go. I'm going to start with... Oh, I can't do it with that hand. I'm going to start with the uh, furthest away. one, or I guess that's three, technically. And then let's get two. There's two. And then... One. One's easy because I can get on the outside there. And get around the outside. Around the outside. Around the outside. Alright, good. They're on there. Now we're going to have to tin the other ends and all that stuff. But let's see, how am I going to route it? We'll route it that way. So let's cut. That one a little shorter. All right, and that one's going to go here. What I'm doing with that enamel wire is I'm using the heat and the flux to burn through or melt through the, that top layer of um, enamel. You can use sandpaper, a razor knife, whatever. But I found that once you get comfortable with it, doing it with the... Um, just the heat of the iron tends to work really well. And then the last one's going to be a little tricky. It's going to be close. So let's move that one over a little. And then tin that last section here. All right, good. Okay, so here. Nope. Nope. And... Nope. Love it. Love it. Now we can solder those on, and then we'll check everything. Good. Let's get that, and let's see. Let's start with... Let's start with this one. Because this one is the furthest away. Like that. And these two are right next to each other. And I think what I'm going to do is just use my. Oh, that's not the right one. No, I guess it is. It just wasn't holding it right.
See, the problem with the tweezers is I can't quite push it down. All oh, wait, yes I can. All right, good. Take that back. There we go. That one, and then the uh, the number two. There we go. That looks, I'm happy with that. I'm actually really happy with that. So I get a good picture. So I can do a screenshot to show you guys. I like that. That turned out really well. The color wheel connector feels solid. Let's get the meter now and see if we have any short circuits. I don't think we're going to find any. Although I am going to clean the flux off first. And then what we'll probably do is just put a few little dabs of super glue just on, at least right here on that wire. Just to help keep that wire from picking up. I don't expect any problems. I think we're pretty solid here, but you know, what do they say? Try to make it better than the factory. All right, that's clean. Just dab the rest of that off. Yeah, that looks good. Come on to that alcohol. Uh, this side's a little loose. Hmm. I might hit those sides with the big iron. Okay, so I just I kissed the one side with the big iron and now it's nice and snug. But let's listen for a good connection. So let's go from pin one or pin four, depending. Let's see if I need to run that last jumper or not. I might. No, that one's good. All right. push down maybe I don't have a good connection on the pad let's uh, let's just hit that real quick yeah I think that'll be better let's see yep perfect and then Yep. Yep. And of course, yep. And then we'll make sure there's no shorts between. Between there and there, no. Between there and there, no. Between there, there, and there, no. So that's good. We didn't want to hear any beeps in that last set of measurements. So now, let's get Mr. Color Wheel Wire plug him in, then latch that, and then let's do some resistance measurements. Okay, so now we're going to just make sure we're reading that color wheel, so I untangle my leads. Okay, so we should see, let's see, what do we got? There's six ohms, so one is common. Yeah. So we should have... Oh, no, I had it right. Common. Come on.
All right. So that's all the coils. There's those three coils in the common inside that color wheel. So that's good. So let me just straighten up a little bit here and we're going to drop the lamp in, hook up the door switch and see what happens. All right. So let's see if this, is that the right connector? Yeah. So this is just a little jumper. You've seen me use this in other projectors. And the buttons are right there. So we have power, enter, left, right, up, down, blank, source, menu, exit, and auto. I'm going to have to dress that wire, maybe. I wonder what keeps that out of the way. All right, so there's snug. That's snug. Let's get our lamp power connected, and that'll be up out of the way. All right, let's get a power cord. Oh, did I whack the camera? Power. All right, we have a standby light. Now, hopefully, nothing damaged the um, color wheel circuit when that other connector got ripped off. Probably not, but we'll find out. So, once I hit power, color wheel should spin up, lamp should ignite almost instantly between each other. Oof. Oof. That motor sounds terrible. Alright. I think that color wheel might be shot. Let's plug in... Let's plug in this one. This is just a little test one. It's out of an old digital projection. But that should at least give us... Let's see if the motor spins right. This will tell me if we have any uh, problems in here or if it's down there. Hmm. That might be a problem. Or maybe I have to run a uh, jumper. Maybe the jumper to pin one, that connection to pin one is not as good as I thought it was. It's definitely possible. Let's just try it one more time. index mark does feel a little iffy hmm let's try it again got it to stay on that time We had DMT problems. I saw the. I thought that was all DMD static until I focused it. But we do have a picture 
that color wheel just sounds terrible. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to shut it off. And then we're going to pull the color wheel out and take a look at it. Come on, turn off. Oh. <laughs> press power key to cancel. So unlike everybody else, you only press the power key once. Alright, so we're going to have me block the camera. And let's get these screws out. So the circuit is fixed. But I think the wheel itself has been damaged by heat. I mean, that, uh, that discoloration on the lamp assembly is very uh, telling. This thing got really hot for a while. So I'll bet that motor's just shot. Alright, can I... How's this together? Do I have to? Yeah. I was hoping I could get away without pulling all those fasteners out of the back, but nope. ECA. I wonder if that's a company or if that's just a part number. It says PCA PN and then PCA Rev 0E. So I wonder if PCA is the company. If you know of PCA, let me know. I'm sure I'll look it up in between now and then, but if not, I don't have a little pop-up bubble here to tell you what PCA is, then drop it in the comments if you don't mind. Alright, so that's good. Let's, let's get Mr. Mainboard out. Oh yeah, there's the PMD-1000, which then gets itself up to here for that. So that looks good. Set that off to the side. Yeah, I'm always just curious who truly builds these. Doesn't matter. I'm just curious. Uh, we got one screw right there. Shorty helical. Oops. Yeah, there's so much. There was so much dust in here at one point. I can see the uh, remnants. And then I got the ballast. Oh, the ballast is kind of getting in the way. The ballast is installed under this. So there's the ballast, there's the part number if you happen to need it, Set it off to the side, we got to take this optical section out so that we can look at the color wheel. Go. Oh, 
then Mr. Speaker, put him back there. Oh, that came off the screw. All right. There we are. There's the color wheel. You know, it does feel kind of sticky when I go to spin it. You know, maybe the guy doesn't care. I'll check with him. I'm not quite sure how much money he was looking to put into this, so we'll check with him before we move on. It's a pretty normal looking color wheel, nothing special, but when I spin it, I can feel it going tss, like there's something, there's something dragging. And like that, we have magic. We have a new IN119 HD color wheel. Hopefully, the bearings on this one feel better than on the other one. It's definitely a different manufacturer because I found out that the fellow who sent me this, he actually replaced this. This is new. I went and looked on the internet to look on eBay, and apparently the listing I found, pardon me, the listing I found was this seller right here, this lamp book company. Um, they do sell new ones, but I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can feel vibration through the motor into my fingers when I do that. But on this one, sure I'm holding it the right way. It's just so much smoother and I don't feel any of that through my finger. So we need to switch this bracket and I think uh, the guy who owns this should contact the seller and tell them that it, it was DOA. Um, we could see that it sort of worked like it had some video, you know, it would sort of come on, but you heard how noisy it was. That's no good. I can't have it that noisy. Let's get the uh, rubber back together. Actually, we'll put that in separate. All right, so once this is back in, I want to make sure the... Um, wires going the right way too. So once this is in, the bracket's going to be holding it there, but I'm going to want the wire to go that way. So hopefully, oh, that's how they do it, like that. So like this maybe? just maybe hey, we'll come up around the side that'll be fine let's get this screw in then we'll put the uh, index sensor on yeah it's gonna go like that This guy.
All right. And let me get the screws. This is going to work so much better. That old wheel, <clears throat> the original, the second new wheel. Can't believe they uh, sent him one like that. That's not cool. All right, let's put this back in the projector. I found the uh, the old color wheel connector. Yeah, she's seen better days. Put this back in. Let's see if we can put that back on. Let's see if I can get the screw to squish down on that. Where did that go? This way. No. Definitely went that way. Okay, so all those are back in, and all snug, yep, all right, let's, let's set that lamp assembly in, snug that guy down, then we'll put the uh, main board, or the, the metal frame for the main board, and then the main board. All right, so let's... Get the metal frame in. So we're gonna plug in the PFC here, this wire, and then this wire is gonna go over to where the um, lamp connector will plug in. And then all these guys are gonna go on top, and then we have our ballast control. So let's plug in the PFC. There's a little bit of dust here. There we go. trying to do it so you guys could see, but it's kind of difficult. Wires. Make sure everything lines up, and it does. Alright, so we have one screw. We have a screw here, and then stuff in the back. So that bottom screw is going to be this one. It's a short helical screw. These guys are going to go in the back. That's going to hold that, hold that in. Yeah, good. Oh, come on, infrared. Get that out of the way. We'll set our speaker there. So far, so good. Let's set the main board back in. Hold those wires out of the way. All right, like 
that. Let's put right there, that one. Sure, those look good. They do. Oop. Actually, let's get this one. All right, then. These guys. You don't have to crank these down. Just get them snug and then just a little turn more. So once it stops, just a little bit more. Alright. Then we have the back. HDMI screw, which is that black fine thread. And now I feel comfortable to plug the wires in and then we can test it. So, low voltage. Color wheel. Index sensor. Oh, dirt underneath, right there. Ballast, right there. This one, yeah, no, wait a minute, this one, yeah, there we go, that's right, exhaust fan, blower fan, and then uh, temperature sensor slash fuse, temp fuse, that guy. And let's plug in the lamp, and then IR, I'm not using it, but let's get it plugged in, and then the speaker. Now we can test it. I have the little bypass tool plugged in, so let's get some power. Boy, that sounds like garbage. That sounded awful. Wonder if it's backwards. Or there's something else wrong. Like just with how fast that thing spun up, it was not good. Try it again. See, it came on that time, but it sounds terrible. God, that thing's noisy. But it is working. See? It just sounds terrible. Oh, man. That is way too noisy. 
Let's see. Basic menu. Advanced menu. That's what I want. Hear it. I keep feeling like it's going to uh, figure it out. Projector info. Alright, so I'm going to throw the meter on there and make sure that I'm reading all the coils. Because, man, that just sounds bad. Five. I wonder if it's just that noisy. Let's see what happens. Let's turn it off and then I'll do an ohm check. Okay, well, it fired right up that time. But I just, I wish it wasn't so noisy. Everything seems right, though. Let's throw the scope on it, just make 100% sure before I put the top on, because this is an inexpensive projector. I need to temper my expectations, and once the cover's on, it'll probably be quieter. But let's throw the scope on and make sure. All right, so I have the scope hooked up. I'm going to carefully go to each pin. Times one, yep. Yeah, you see that? I don't think that's right. Hmm. Well, that said, the uh, index sensor is holding good. Hmm. See if we have any capacitors here. Nope. There's feedback.
Well, see now it's kind of settling down. Although I don't like the way that uh, why? What is doing that? Is that a power supply problem? Let's check the uh, low voltage. No, nope, that looks all right. Let's go power supply. That looks good. Yeah, that's all right. All right, I'm just being, uh, well, I just see a little blipping. Oh boy, let's go to that low voltage again. I mean, the projector's running, so I should probably just be happy. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yeah, low voltage is good. All right, we're going to try it. I'm going to finish putting it back together and see how it runs. Because it's actually quieted down a bunch since I've been running it. I have a feeling it might be settling in. So I'm going to shut it down and let's see what it does. Okay, so next thing, let's unplug my little bypass. We'll plug the door switch in. There we go. That looks good. Is there a screw on the top? No, on the bottom. Alright, we'll put the door on. Slide that shut. This is just to make assembly hopefully a, a little more straightforward for me. Now this is an inexpensive projector like I said. So I should probably not expect it to be super quiet. But I'll tell you what, for the cost, these are pretty sweet. These are definitely, um, seem like a good value. You know, if you want to get into projectors and you don't want to drop a bunch of money on something new, this would probably be a good option. Um, personally, I prefer used because it's more in my price range for the quality, but I totally understand folks who want a new device. You know, you get to peel the plastic off. All right, we got a couple screws on the back to put in. Oh, there's 
one there? Was it this one? No. Oh, this one. I was going to say. stuff in the back so let's see these guys will start them Alright, those are in. Now I just gotta tighten those guys. Let me just make sure they're started. Oh. Okay. Well, well. Tighten snug those down with the nut driver, but getting them in that uh this actually works really well. go set it up and see actually let's plug it in here first and then. all right everybody I uh, found something kind of interesting this was the original connector is actually rolling around in the bottom and it is reversed the contacts on this one are on the bottom this one are on the top so the color wheel is actually running backwards that's probably why it's doing that weird flickering thing, that, that, that noise that it was doing. So what I have to do is reverse the order of the wires, um, all the wires. I'm going to have to add that fourth one and make sure I cut the trace going to that pad right there. Um, I might actually just real quick check and see if I have a, a donor board that has the same connector on it because I'd really kind of like to keep that wiring it's kind of nice and just switch the uh, connector so I'm gonna go look at that real quick and if not we'll just flip flop the wires that wire will go here this wire will go there and that wire will go there then that wire will go there well the wire that's not there yet will go there and this is enameled wire it's insulated so it can actually lean on top of itself and when it's finished, I'll, or when I'm finished, I'll put some super glue or something to hold the wires down. But let me go check for donor boards that have that connector first. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this connector, and we're going to rewire it. So I'm going to use this little hardened scraper thingy to break the connection between there and there. This is actually a uh, flechette. Uh, Vietnam era, Vietnam War era flechette. They're super sharp. And I got a bag of them. So they're really good for scraping traces apart like that. I keep one around just for that. 
Uh, I am going to get a uh, grinding pen, a little mini grinding pen for the future, but for now that's what we'll do. So that should be broken now, or that, that trace should be cut. Let's make sure. Okay. So if I go from here. Good. Nothing. So I think it's around here somewhere yeah right there so we're off of it so this wire is going to go here these two are going to flip and then a fourth <clears throat> pardon me a fourth wire is going to come over to there maybe what I'll do is I'll flip these two here and then desolder this wire and move it there and then add a new one to here Let's see. <clears throat> first things first. Oh, let me get my sponge. I want to, uh, I'll move those first two. Get sponge, solder, and flux. Flux down there for these guys. And let me get a piece of wire. Alright, so here's our our extra wire. Clean the tip and the sponge. Let's tin that. Good. Yeah. Alright. So let's see, this one's going to go here, and that one's going to go up to there. So, let's zoom you guys in. That's definitely too long. I gotta get some new snippers. All right, so that one's gonna go to there, but I'm probably gonna put a little, yeah, I'm gonna put a little, little bend in it because it I have to be able to uh, move it and work with it. So let's tend that. That enameled wire, you can sand it if you want, but I find that you can just melt it with the solder and that works fine. Alright, so let's get this one ready to move. That off. That one's going to go down there. Let's switch these other two. So we'll do the inside two wires first. Come on. Trim some of that extra tinned area off. Because remember, the only insulation is where it's copper colored, anywhere it's silver is conductive. There we 
go. This one is going to go all the way over. Let's get that angled right. All right. That should do it. Make sure those wires are not totally laying on each other and uh, let's get the meter and check our connections. So let's just make sure there's no shorts there. Well, that's actually good. Um, we should read six ohms. Six ohms. Yep, and then this one should be six. We wanted to make sure there was no short circuits. That's what I was worried about. Okay, so that's in. That's our little switch bypass. I just want to make sure that we can fire this up. Let's see. Let's see if it's better now that I got the uh, coil spinning the right way. Oh, that sounds way better. Sounds so, so much better. That did it. So... The old wheel may be a little quieter now, but that bearing still sounded bad. Let's see, we got a little bit of flicker. Let's see, is it settling out though? It does seem like it's settling out. Let's see, we get that focused. There we go. That looks pretty good. Menu. Menu. No, that's there we are. Advanced menu. Status. Projector info. 2596 hours. All in normal. That's good. Let's go. Set up. Image setup. I wonder if the, I'm looking for a test pattern, but it doesn't look like this has one. Digital zoom is all the way up. That's a little weird. 'll do a factory reset because I just want to make sure all the settings are back where they should be originally and to see it there we go okay so that zoom was supposed to be the way it was and this is supposed to be the way it is so this is good and it is quiet so let's shut it down put the top back on and run it again and then just to kind of stabilize everything I'm just gonna put a little a single drop of glue right there and that'll just keep those longer wires from shifting around I cleaned the uh, flux off so that should be fine let's get some uh, activator to help set that up a little faster it's just the um, It's 
kind of crazy. The chemical that's in here, it's heavier than air, so it just kind of pours out and causes that stuff to set up. Forget what it is. Some kind of, I don't know, some kind of uh, hydrocarbon kind of smelling thing. It kind of almost smells sort of like gasoline. Let's, uh, let's put the cover on. Plug our test wire, put that back in its box. And we'll plug in the door switch for this lid. And then make sure the zoom and focus lenses are turned so they're in all the way. Then the top will just slide on. If, if these are out, you know, if you were testing and you have it focused where the lens is sticking out like that. Getting that cover back on is pretty difficult, so I, I probably don't mention this enough, but you really want to make sure those lenses are all the way back. And let's flip it over. Get our screws here. We'll put these guys in. Caddy corner. You guys can probably hear it as I get the screws. I probably didn't hear that one, it wasn't very loud. But as the screws drop in to the threads, you can kind of hear them click. That wasn't it. There, right there. And that again makes it so that we're not cutting fresh threads. It keeps them from getting stripped out easier. You have to be careful because the click could also be uh, dropping into the hole. This is the last one. There we go. All right, that's everything. Now we have to put this back in there. And the other thing we're going to do is put the lamp door on. Uh, somebody. Somebody mentioned that I don't always talk about the lamp doors, and they're right. Lamp doors are pretty critical. There are switches, every projector has it, that if you don't have the lamp door on, the projector won't turn on. You can almost hear that click. One of the first things to check, if you've just replaced your lamp assembly, the bulb, anytime, if you've had that door off, make sure that door's back on the right way and that it's activating the door switch or you're going to be in trouble. It's not going to work. There we go. Let's uh, plug it in one more time before we take it over and test it on the big screen. All right, let's uh, fire it up. Let me just reboot the Pi real quick. Let's see what the picture looks like. Lights coming on. focused. There we go. Of course it's not fitting on the screen because it's a really big image. But um, I think we are okay. Let's get it straight there. Let's see. Can I focus it? Yeah. There we go. That looks pretty good. I think that'll about do it. Um, yeah. I was a little worried when that color wheel was making noise, and I'm glad I found the old connector and realized that it was backwards, because I really wasn't sure. I was going to try it anyway, but now I know for sure that this was the right way to go. And that'll do it. 
Um, that is how you replace the color wheel in an Infocus IN119 and one of the ways you can repair a uh, torn off connector like that. So if you have any questions go ahead and put them down in the uh, comment section there and I'll have a link in the description if you need a replacement projector lamp for one of these. I'll also have an email listed in there if you want to purchase this uh, exact color wheel that I purchased here. So I'll have that info down there. Um, if you don't subscribe to my channel, think about hitting that subscribe button over there. Um, I get videos out eh, pretty regularly. Hopefully they're entertaining and useful. Um, but yeah, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching.